Well, hello there, and thank you for joining me for another edition of Tea for Two. And we'll take a moment just to honor our mission statement, which is to support and facilitate in some way in this whole hoopla and dance of media conscious win-win relationships. And as is our tradition here, I have one of my favorite cups of tea. This tea is a tea called Green Tea Tropical, and it's by Mighty Leaf. It's an organic tea. I've uh, used my my Pyrex glass electric kettle to heat up the water. I've put in the tea bag for maybe about a minute, and then uh, I found that the hints of tropical are brought out even better as well as the tea being cooled off a bit by adding frozen fruit. So this one has. Uh, the green tea tropical tea bag plus two slices of frozen peaches. It's very tasty and then uh, I've added a little bit to our appearance this time by lighting a gift from uh, my good friend Francine and also including a bouquet of flowers that she brought me for my 36th birthday. So it's quite, uh, I've really been enjoying. I asked for tulips and fragrant lilies and that's exactly uh, what she's brought me here and it's just been a delight. So this week we're looking at timing pacing time, the way that time intersects with chemistry, and it's such a big and interesting topic to explore that I'm just going to ramble on about uh, it for a while, and you see my screensaver here is distracting me a little bit, so I'm going to turn that off. But let me just share some of the many ways that time comes into chemistry, and two people coming together and coming apart. And the first picture that I think of is two people going out on a walk. And one person has their kind of comfortable rhythm at about this pace here, which might be about five miles an hour. And another person has this very kind of brisk focus that when they get into that groove, they feel sharp and that's who they identify as being. And another person just has a very, very slow and not even necessarily a discernible rhythm, but they're, they want to be present to everything that's there on the walk. And, you know, looking off and smelling the roses and so maybe their uh, pace is about one mile an hour. And what's interesting about this is everyone is in their flow, their personal kind of space that brings out their presence, their aliveness. But for every mile that is walked at these different paces, each of these three people are further apart. If one is going at one mile an hour and the other is going at five miles an hour, then at the end of a mile walk, those two people are four miles apart. If the one that's going five miles an hour and the one that's going about six, seven miles an hour, at the end of the mile, they are a couple miles apart. So pacing in the way that something is done either creates a gap two people connecting, or it brings them together. If, if one person is, and, and here's the thing, if, if one person's starting off 
an hour ahead of time, there will be a point where those two paths intersect and then separate again. If So, depending on our pace, there will be convergent points with everyone at some point, but the longer, you know, the connection points, those will tend to happen with people more on our pace. So that's just, that's just one area that timing comes into, comes into chemistry. And of course, a walk is the least of it. If one person connects and dives in deeply and is ready to just fall in love and explore, explore their sensuality and sexuality, within a matter of a few hours, you know, they, they've got all this stuff going on in their mind, they're opening up to pictures, they're uh, just totally opening up to the presence of this other person, and this other person is in this space of, you know, who is this guy, who's, who's this person, what's, what's really going on here, and at the end of a few hours they haven't quite figured it out, and so they're cold and reserved. Those two paces may be the difference between 60 miles an hour and 1 mile an hour. And they're in completely different places. It's like they're two different temperatures and you mingle them together and there's a shock between those two temperatures. And one of the things that I guess I'm aware of is the way that time intersects with so many things. We have the music playing in the background. Uh, the, the, I've used this music before, it's the Angels of Com Comfort by uh, Yasas. And you know, in different moments, there are these big swells, and time ultimately translates into sound. Everything about what's going on here can be related to time the pace of my gestures, the pitch of my voice is, it's a, it's a time sequence, it's how many times it goes back and forth in a given second. The pitch would be very different if it's slowed down. Which pitch engages you? Which pitch interrupts and captures your attention? It's all about time. Every structure has a cycle of birth, blossoming, creation, and then decay. It's about where we intersect, and with each person it's the same way. Our bodies are like flowers. They're budding forth, blossoming, and then decaying. At what point in that process do we connect our bodies with other people's bodies? It's it's just wonderful to, to look at uh, to look at time and pacing in such a broad way. One of the more powerful ways that time affects chemistry is the amount of hours that we give to a relationship on a weekly or a daily basis. That also affects what's going on. If you can imagine a plant and you take two different lettuce plants and one you give one cup of water to every 12 hours. So you have one cup every 12 hours. And you take another lettuce plant and you give it two cups every 24 hours. And then you take another lettuce cup and you give it, let's say, 100,000 gallons once a year, you know, so some relatively comparable number that I haven't done the math for, but you can have a sense that there's, a, there's an absorption capacity, that for each plant and each person is different, but some, and lettuce is actually one of them, 
will be sweet and tender when it gets these daily nurturing doses on a regular basis. And there are other things, cacti and other plants that very much need the drought cycle. They need things to go bone dry and to somehow challenge it, or it's likely to produce rot. And there are people that need this daily drip of nurturance and encouragement, and they will be the sweetest and most beautiful people when they're given that sense of richness and nourishment. And there are people that, without spells, going from the extremes of full-on rich intensity that might drown a lettuce, that might wash away its soil, to that desert, that parched feeling in which new impulses come in that are creative and inspirational of some kind. So these senses of pacing, the pacing of fertilizer, the pacing of connection, do you spend half an hour to a day in quality time, or do you spend a month of uninterrupted attention in quality time every couple of months, or once every year do you get together for these hot, intense periods? Because time in that sense, when you use another element, when you use an element of fire, different metals have a melting point at different points. So the same heat, the same fire, if you put on a, a gold pot, it may melt within maybe an hour. And so you've got liquid and creative possibilities within an hour. But you take steel and it may either take a greater heat and containment and preparation, or it may take longer before that steel reaches a stage where it can be malleable and flexible, and even so, perhaps not as flexible as gold. And so as we look at time in the way that it affects every aspect of our lives, and certainly the way every physical attribute, every psychological aspect, how it comes together, it's very much as if we are welders and sculptors and alchemists that are using time moment to moment to align with our intent. And most of this happens unconsciously. People have a comfort zone that is often you know, very shallow, very safe, very familiar, and they will naturally steer their attention, the change of subject, in a way that will keep that in that particular zone. They're using time to sustain their comfort zone. But time can be turned in a moment and switched around and used to go very deep, to open up a whole new world. So that's the thought that I want to leave you with in this week in which I explore a little bit more in the book in the area where time and pacing relate to our chemistry together is how is the way that I divide time? Do I take a relationship and break it up into mostly 20 minute increments? What if that same relationship was to take a whole week's worth of 20 minute increments and just spend two hours dropping down with someone? What would that do? And is that positive for you? Does that bring you closer to who you want to be? Similarly, if you have perhaps 50 people that are dancing in and around your life, what would happen if you zeroed in on five of those people and went to a deeper level and gave them three times the time you've been giving them in the past? Would that serve you? Would that take you where you want to go? Or would that bring up so much stuff that it takes you further away? That's is something I want to leave you to explore. With that, I give you a sense of blessing, a namaste, and thank you for joining me. Let's take another uh, sip in green tea tropical. 
And I want to say that one of my favorite parts when I get down to the bottom of this is, of course, the frozen peaches that I get organic uh, from uh, Good Earth or in Fairfax or Whole Foods. They have become sweet and soft, and it's just like this warm peach pie at the bottom of the, uh, the cup. So it's been fun, and I do hope you will join me again.